What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel for another Ark of War episode. And in this video, I want to share with you guys some advice um, that will help you carry out the faction tasks with, with maximum time efficiency and minimal losses, okay? Uh, keep in mind that everything that I'm about to share is not required to successfully do the faction tasks, but <clears throat> I do highly recommend them so that you do them as fast as possible and you minimize losses, okay? So, I wanna, the first thing I wanna talk about is Arc of War, sorry, not Arc of War, your Arc positioning, okay? The positioning of your ship, all right? So, if you see that green indicator on my map, I'm gonna click on this yellow this yellow icon on the left side to show the uh, the regions, the different regions on the map, and kind of like the sweet spot where you want to be is close to the border that separates the ten thirteens and the four nines, okay. But kind of go a little bit above it, okay. That is a great spot, and the main reason for this is it gives you easy access to. The, to the wide range of missions that you're going to be doing throughout, oh, excuse me, throughout the faction quests. So, I'm sure a lot of you already know that the very first missions require you to go out to the very outside, outskirts of the map to do those, you know, defeat level one, two, three, resource tile or monster, right? And yeah, just being in in, in a great position and having access to that reduces your your marching time by significantly. I used to do my faction tasks when I was hanging out in Senecon over here by uh by the guild fort. And those very first those first like 10 or 15 missions were just a hassle like I mean not just those 10 and 15 there's actually a lot of missions throughout that require you to come out in in this region to kill level 7 monsters, level 6 monsters, level 5s. Like, you'll see all these worms over here. These, these level 5s, okay, level 7s. They're all out here, guys. So, this is a great spot to be in just overall. But, yeah, guys, your arc, the positioning of your arc is definitely crucial. It will... It will reduce the time of of how long you do faction tasks significantly. I used it used to take me like three over three hours to do faction tasks because I would just not want I would just refuse to move and would just stay in Senegon. But now, but just by just by switching my positioning, I reduce my time by so much. Like now, I only do faction. It takes me like an hour and a half, no more than that to do faction tasks and I'm positive that just your arc positioning will definitely contribute so feel free to do that to reduce the time that it takes you because faction tasks are annoying um, but you can't pass up on these rewards so you want to do this as fast as possible smooth as possible okay the next thing activate a march speed okay um, that's just self-explanatory March speeds reduce your march by half the time. So, again, faster. Nothing much more to it. The next thing is gear, okay? So, I would highly recommend, again, you do not you don't need, but I highly recommend uh dodge gear, okay, for for minimal losses purposes, okay? So, if you have dodge gear, if you have a Thelemis and a Gale, um, and you're dodging, you're not going to lose units. That's just, that's just the way it is. Um, but that leads me on to the next one is, uh, that leads me on to the next point is you want as many A class or above commanders that you can get because you need to be able to equip that Thalamus booster. Okay. Uh, that Thalamus booster will again, help you dodge, minimize losses, and it'll just be overall less expensive to do those faction quests. 
And then the next thing I want to talk about is leadership. Okay. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering like, well, what leadership do I need to, to take out the missions? Well, that again, it depends on two things. One, whether or not you have Dodge and two, the, the, the tier unit that you are using. So me personally, with a 326 leadership, even less than that, with like a 250k leader or, two, or 250 leadership commander, I can take out level sevens, level eights. Okay, with 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 high dodge, and with T6, T7. Okay, I can do it with T6, no problem. Um, but again, it's because I have the tier unit and I have the dodge. All right, so they don't hit me. Let me see if I can show you guys some reports here. Uh, yeah, look, here we go. I took out a level a level 9 to Rorpian, but I was using my best gear. Let me see if I can show you guys a to Rorpian attack of me just using, let's see, a level 8 to Rorpian. Check it out. Just a Gale. And a Thalamus booster, not not amazing, and just two um two Dragon Slayers, and I won. And it wasn't. Let me see. I'll, I can show you guys a replay. Rock does not have high leadership. Look at that six Rhino, and you know I do this no problem because I have the dodge, and I have decent. I have decent weapons. I don't need anything insane. Um, so yeah, that's that. So again, for the leadership, it varies depending on, because uh, like for example, if you don't have the dodge, and or the 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 high tier unit, you'll need higher leadership, right? So the so the baseline, I think, for tier purposes, I think tier five and above, you can do all fa all all uh, fact all eighty faction tasks, no problem. All right. No issue with dodge and with decent enough weapons, you can do all the faction tasks without or um, with tier 5, all right, with low leadership like 250, all right. Now, the next thing is your Arkhol. Arkhol definitely can play a role, especially if you have a very strong Arkhol like Apocalypse. Um, but if you have any other Arkhol, I mean. To be honest, these first three, if you have any of these, these are probably actually better for faction quests because they give you dodge. I mean, it's not a lot, to be completely honest. It's not a lot, but it's something. Dodge is, I mean, I feel like dodge is probably one of the most important things you need to to do faction quests, to do faction quests with minimal losses. Ares will also be, can also be a great one. Um, but again, you know, like Apocalypse or even Holiday Slayer, great. Okay, so that's our cool. And then I want to talk about the what missions or why you should only be doing the 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 first eighty. Okay, so the the first eighty missions are generally doable. Like they're they're easy. All right. Like and I and I say this not because you know I have Arc Apocalypse or I have all these all this um, all this gear and all this all this high tier unit, but like I said, if you know just using tier five and above, high enough dodge, and with those two things alone and like two hundred and fifty leadership, two hundred leadership, you're fine. Um, you should be able to do it. So, um, feel free. So you shouldn't worry. Now, the reason why I say that for only do the eighty is because anything of anything past eighty, you're not really gaining much anymore. You're only adding prestige to your faction, which is nice. Um, but in my case, I don't want to do those last twenty, even if well, right now there's an event going on. So I want to talk about the difficulty. Of faction tasks when there's an event versus when there is no event. Okay, but before I get into that, I also want to briefly highlight a few other things that you can do to make faction tasks go by a lot smoother, and that is activating power ups. Okay, so you can activate these power ups here. Okay, 
these dodge crit accuracy. <clears throat> if you uh, if you're if you're if you feel like you're gonna struggle to go through the missions, feel free to just activate these and it'll really help. Okay, and also get in get inside your guild fort. Your guild fort gives you some nice buffs. Um, if your research is decent, but even if your d research is shit, it's fine. Like some, it's better than nothing. So the next thing is gold skipping missions. Okay, um, there are two different scenarios where you will have to skip gold. Well, actually, no. There's one scenario where you will have to skip gold, but there's another scenario, another mission where it's just so annoying. So the mission, so one of those missions is plundering, okay? Plunder resources. So those are the missions that you don't have to skip with gold, but I like to skip them myself because I'm I'm shielded all the time and I don't like I'm not going to burst my I'm not going to pop my my shield for a little faction task. So I'd rather just spend, you know, however much gold it is to to skip if I'm lucky or for the most part I'll get the plunder missions prior to mission 20. And it won't cost more than 100 gold to skip the single mission. If you get it early enough, it only costs 50 gold to skip. So that's really nice. But the other mission, the other type of mission that you have to spend gold on, no, no getting around it, is when it asks you to do a mission with a specific commander that you do not own and this happens to me pretty often i sometimes i'll get like flare like it'll say like lead flare to do something well i don't have flare so i have to spend the gold to skip that mission which kind of sucks they need a the game needs to fix that that's kind of like a bug where it shouldn't be asking you to do missions with a commander that you don't own. Um, so I think that's pretty lame. But yeah. So that's that. But going back to the difficulty of the of the faction tasks overall. Um, so as you can see right now. The, the item that you get for completing the 100th task is Endless Vortex. Now, Endless Vortex is one of the items required to forge one of these amazing chess pieces. And so, it, this is an event considered as, or that I consider a faction, a faction task related event. Where you have to do one, the 100th faction task to get this, this amazing reward, right? Now there are other missions that you or other events that you guys have, may have already experienced where the faction the 100th mission is either a bunch of melange, a shit ton of uh, magazines, shadow matter, you know, something very some something very um very valuable. But me personally, I don't think it's worth it doing those last 20 missions. Unless you have insanely good research, or if the if all your commanders are at a high enough leadership, like above twelve hundred, above one thousand leadership, and if you have a high enough tier unit, like tier seven or even tier eight or above. But me personally, I never go past eighty. Because those last 20 missions, for one, they get much more difficult, even uh, in non-event and during event faction tasks. And just like the, the return for doing those missions is just not worth it because you will get losses. Like, the majority of players, including myself, will get losses. And I don't think it's just it's just not worth it. I'd rather just wait for the next week to go by and just wait for the the faction tasks to reset and just do the first eighty again. And even when you get to revert status, you can start um, this fifty cosmic crystal uh, checkpoint disappears and it gets replaced by uh, two uh, two chests for your respective faction, which which uh, has a chance to drop faction tokens which will allow you to forge these amazing uh gear pieces here <coughs> so um 
And now I want to talk to you guys about cosmic crystals it's themselves and other sources of cosmic crystals. So the only other source other than faction tasks is daily missions. But right now I can't you can't get any because of the the event going on. So you, typically when there's an event going on, the the daily missions also change. But usually you can get 10 cosmic crystals for on your on one of the checkpoints for daily missions. So that's another way to get faction tasks every day. Another there's an event going on right now actually in my server Bogo on Cosmic Crystal. So if you're going to I mean of course you can spend gold to buy anything in this game. So if you do consider if you are considering buying fa uh, cosmic crystals, um, I highly recommend you wait for this BOGO um, event because if you buy 50, you get 50 for free. <coughs> and from my experiences, typically when they bring out an event like this, like BOGO on cosmic crystal, they're they're kind of hinting at an upcoming galactic oracle event, and which leads me into the next thing I want to talk about is why is why you should never use your cosmic crystals on your faction and that's because of the galactic oracle event so over 80 percent i'd say at least over 80 percent of all galactic oracle events um ask for cosmic crystals so the galactic oracle if any of you have not experienced that event yet it is an event where a little icon appears up here where where this uh, new special thing is up here. A little icon appears, and you click on it, and the and it's, and that's how you open up the Galactic Oracle. And the Galactic Oracle pretty much shows you right there what it um what re what it requires for you to exchange for for potential rewards. And over eighty percent of the time, it's cosmic crystals. So hold on to those cosmic crystals because the the drops that you can get from Galactic Oracle are always amazing. They're always great. And so I know so many of you might be asking, well, if I'm not spending my cosmic crystals on my faction, then how am I going to add prestige to my faction? Well, if you look closely on your faction tasks, you'll notice that you get prestige for doing the mission itself. So one cosmic crystal gives adds a hundred prestige to your faction so for doing one mission alone right now if i were to do this 81st mission uh i would get 500 prestige for my faction so that's five cosmic crystals but as like let's just say as, let's just assume that each mission gave 500 prestige 80 times five that's how much cosmic crystals i'd be getting for doing 80 missions i mean that's not really how because it scales up as you go along like the first few like the first missions only give a hundred prestige per mission but as they get more and more difficult uh they they do go up they scale up but still i mean my point is you should be just saving your cosmic crystals do not spend them on your faction rather just do the faction quests themselves to level to to add prestige to your faction okay save those cosmic crystals for the galactic oracle now just to give you guys a perspective on how much more difficult the faction tasks get i mean the last 20 missions okay so that's what i'm talking about again whether it's an event that whether whether it is whether you are doing faction quests during an event or during a non-event week, I think I, I'm I'm pretty confident that many like most of most players, um, you know, assuming you know most most developed players can do. Oh, excuse me, can do the first eighty missions. As long as you you have the things I I've highlighted. You should be able to do them, um, either either with with minimum losses or no losses at all. Okay, but let me just give you guys an idea. Usually, um, just to actually let me just talk to you guys quickly about what what the hardest missions are that you should expect. Okay, so the hardest missions that you should expect from faction tasks are killing. Um, destroyers like in explore right in explore here just like doing anything that has to kill the uh, having to kill units 
that have to do with chapter three. Okay. So that's probably one of the hardest, like some of the hardest missions, which isn't really that hard to be honest. Or the I, th I think the hardest missions of all is uh, to kill level eight, level seven monsters. Okay. Um, so when it's when you're doing faction quests on a non-event week, the faction tasks will ask you that the highest level monster to kill is level seven or a level eight. Okay. But because there's an event going on right now, a faction task related event, the faction tasks, like I said, get hard, get the, the difficulty gets, gets harder. So it scales up and the hardest missions to expect on the first 80 missions is taking out a level, level nines and level tens, level nines and level tens. Okay. With, with any commander that it'll ask for, um, but the level 7 and 8s are very doable with, you know, 250 leadership commander, enough dodge, and tier 5 units, you're good. But the 9s and 10s, you might just need a little bit more stats, a little bit more combat power, so maybe T6s, okay? Maybe you could do it with T5, you can try it out, and your tech, your tech will also play a crucial role, but just to let you guys know, once it gets to the 80th mission, it gets harder. The last 20 missions are difficult, especially when there's an event going on. So just to give you guys a perspective, um, the 80th mission just asked me to kill a level 10 monster. And the 81st mission is now asking me to kill a level 15 nightmare. Look what this nightmare has. And I tried it out. It, it, it was asking me to do it with Luna who's only at like 1,000 leadership, and I sent like full Bastion, I sent my best gear, and this is what happened, guys, it was, it was terrible, I mean, I, I'm, once I scouted it, I knew it was gonna be bad, but I just said, fuck it, let me just try it out, see what happens, and boom, I got wrecked, destroyed, no chance, so yeah, guys, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, feel free to ask me any specific questions down below on the comments section. Um, if you have any uh, specific questions about how you should do a certain mission or anything like that, based on your circumstances. But um, I mean, of course, everyone's circumstances is going to be different. Um, like me, like I have an R cool that really helps out. So, um, so yeah, guys, that's it for this video, though. But thanks for watching. Um, if you like what I do here, please share, please like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time for another video, alright? Peace out.